repeated before each of the nouns, each of the personal nouns, and that has to mean stinked persons. Existing simultaneously? Yep. Yes. Yep. Sharp's rule? Absolutely. Now, there's some Greek people, uh, scholars in the uh, audience, and you're going to tell me that Good. Sharp's Who rule means Who are that they? they must exist simultaneously where, where must. as collateral persons. Yep. You know is that there, isn't so. is, is there, yep. all right, just a second. Is there a Greek scholar in the audience who is familiar with Dr. Granville Sharp? Anybody here? Anybody you you know that isn't so. That now, has me, nothing now, to say about that. Wait a second, wait a second. I just want to be fair to the audience. Is there a Greek scholar in the audience who's familiar with Granville Sharp's rule of Greek grammar or knows who Granville Sharp is? Now, Brother Sabin says yes. All right, now, if I there's anybody the here... television audience. No, you didn't say that. You said the know, audience. There will be somebody that will know that you are misconstruing All right, Granville Bob. Sharp. Granville Sharp has Bob. nothing whatsoever to say Bob. about those three persons, and, and just a minute, existing simultaneously. We do not deny that there's a father. We do not deny that there's a son. We do not deny that there's a Holy Spirit. What we deny is that these three have existed simultaneously <coughs> as eternal collateral persons in the Godhead. May, may I just, and Sharp's may, rule has nothing may, to say no, about that. No, may I just comment on in that? In spite of the fact that he said it does. Well, may, I, may I just briefly comment on that? May Go I? ahead. Okay. Granville Sharp's rule is designated and quoted accurately by, by Cal for the purpose of showing that in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, cannot bring you to the conclusion grammatically or logically that the name is Jesus. There are three separate names. They are not the name singular of Jesus. Granville Sharp's rule is trying to show that the article, when it's before the noun, makes it a person. The Father is a person. The Son is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. I invoked the law of prepositions, Bob, in the beginning of our dialogues to show that that's exactly what a preposition says. You are with somebody, there is more than one person. I do not understand how the Trinity operates because the scripture says there is the mystery of God and the Father and Christ. I don't understand the mystery of God's nature, but it's a long time before I'm going to turn around and deny it and say it can't be and it's pagan when I don't know, you don't know your Greek, you don't know the grammar, you can't quote the sources, and you're telling us that this is your position that stands up. It does not stand up biblically. It does stand up biblically. Quote the Greek to and, me. And you can, uh, the Greek on what? On this passage right here. On, uh, I'll, I'll let you okay. read it yourself. And you tell me. Yeah, what it wouldn't make any has. difference because It'll make Sharp's a difference rule has nothing to do with the persons existing collaterally, eternally. It has nothing to do with it. Excuse me. Let me uh, cite to Sharp know. directly. Back to grammar, right. okay? First of all, Sharp doesn't have just one rule. He's got six rules. Uh, a man Listen. whom you probably know, named Robert Brent Graves, who dedicated his book to the two of you in to part. You. To you. To both of you in part. Yeah. Uh, pointed out that, uh, or, or attempted to point out, that one pastor who used Granville Sharp's rule on Matthew 28, 19 had misquoted Granville Sharp. And he says, in, uh, on the contrary, in all honest we, uh, honesty, we must categorically reject the last statement of the above quotation. For this explanation is not known as Granville Sharp's rule. It is sad that a minister would make the completely false claims which are found in the above comment, even if he may have been simply mistaken. It is particularly disturbing that he states that he has the rule marked on page 147 of Dana and Manti's grammar. If he had the rule marked, he might have acknowledged that Dana and Manti did not give Matthew 28, 19 as an example of it. And the son of Aaron, of course, could have brought 50 witnesses who didn't see him do it. If he had the rule marked, he might have acknowledged that the above-mentioned gram uh, grammarians did give Titus 2.13 as an example, and that they noted that Sharp's rule in the latter verse illustrates that Jesus Christ himself right. is our great uh, God. Listen, now, what he's, now doing, you've had of time what to he's talk. doing is he's you've assuming... You've plenty of time to talk, well, no, wait, You I'm wanted so the Granville no. Sharp's rule. I, I want explain. to know where in the Bible it states that God has eternalisted in three separate co-equal persons that are collateral, that have society within themselves, Ready? that can Matthew, speak singularly Matthew as God the Son. God. Matthew 28, 19. That states that they've existed there, collateral. Yes. It certainly Eternally. does because it does not. Uh, all you have but to listen, do is combine it. But all listen. you have to do is combine it with Malachi 3, 6, which says, I am the Lord, I change not. 
If the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are distinct persons, I am the Lord. All right. Singular. Now wait a minute. If the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are distinct persons, then the then God changed then from the Father I. to the Son. He changed from the Son to the Spirit you right. in your theology. No, in your but theology. What that, in your theology, no. is, which is Sabellian, which claims that there was this progress of persons. But the fact is that God was always these three persons. The sixth rule of Granville Sharp is what does apply to Matthew 28, 19. And Robert Brent Graves, who dedicated his book to the two of you, assumed that this minister was talking about the first rule. The sixth rule is, as the insertion, this is quoting directly from Granville Sharp, as the insertion of the copulative chi between nouns of the same case without articles, according to the fifth rule, denotes that the second noun expresses a different person, thing, or quality from the preceding noun, so likewise the same effect attends the copulative when each of the nouns are preceded by the articles. Now, what does this mean in plain layman's language? When you've got personal nouns conjoined by the Greek word most commonly con translated and, the word chi, when those are joined together by that word, and every one of the personal nouns in that sequence, whether there are two or 62, has a, a definite article in front of it, the word the, whatever case it might happen to be. But when every one of them has the word the, it is absolutely required that in every single instance of that grammatical construction in, the, in New Testament Greek, distinct persons are being spoken of. That is the case in Matthew 28, 19. That is Granville Sharp's rule, and it has stood the test of scholarship for well over 200 years. Can you refute you it? You conclude that it means that they existed eternally. You Sharp said, does. You well, said if Sharp's they didn't rule, exist eternally, then God Sharp's changed, and God says, I don't change. Who, who said God changed? God has never changed. You said he changed. You said that no, the Father didn't. became the Son. He and did. The son he changed then was, was the, the Father, father and, and the, the son. son are distinct persons. Was the Father in the Son? Was he? Yes. Did he change said, when he came in the Son? You just said Listen. he wasn't just in, he became the Son. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the Father became the Son. No, the whole say that idea he became that the Jesus son. is the Father never came around until Noetus in the late half of the second century. The idea that Jesus came, uh, was the Father came about in Isaiah 9 6. Oh, For God. unto us a child is born, huh? un and it's not sharp. The Hebrew unto us is a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, <laughs> Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the right. Father Hebrew of Eternity, the Father of Eternity, right. the Father of uh, the, the Father of, ever, uh, of, of, of everlasting itself. Okay, but yes, that, that doesn't mean the Father of the Son of God. Doesn't mean the Father of Himself. If He means was the, the father, father of Eternity, if He was the Look Father at, in eternity, eternity, who was He the Father of? <laughs> Look at E.J. Young's commentary on How Isaiah. How many fathers are there? A greater Hebrew scholar hardly exists for in our him. century. Look e. at Isaiah. E.J. Young it points out that the proper understanding of Father of Eternity. In